Today I have a super easy and fun project for you. We will knit a machine knitted toy ball for a baby, human, or animal. This is a nine week old kitten playing with ours. She has just discovered that it is a worthy foe. Gage is not especially important in this project, but we want the ball to be roughly round. So I'm starting with the assumption of four stitches, six rows per inch for the demo. I will write this up with many, many other possible gauges for Country Knitting of Maine News and Views. And the knitting is simplicity itself. Our ball is suspended from the mantelpiece simply by putting it under the heavy box that sits there. You could certainly put a hook in the doorway or any number of things, or just let it roll across the floor. It's a fun toy either way. Uh, you do want to select washable yarn and polyester filling is going to be a lot easier to get it washed and dried when you need to than cotton filling. Other than that, there aren't very many specifics. You can use odds and ends and be happy. I'm aiming at a ball about 12 inches in circumference, so that means casting on 48 stitches. And we do this with a manual weaving cast on, going alternately over and under the needles. Because I'm demonstrating and didn't want one more thing to hold on to, I hung a knotted loop on the leftmost needle. But the better way that will make it easier to gather later is to hang the left hand end or the beginning end, you can start from either side, and just have a clothespin weighting it down. So over, under, over, under, all the way across, and thread the yarn into the carriage set it at a moderate stitch size, and hang some weights. We want a little bit tighter knitting than we would want for a sweater, or even a lot tighter, because we want very firm fabric. Using this manual weaving cast on, you will most likely have to fix the leftmost stitch, just as I am having to do. It's not a problem, just knit it off. Now, in order to get a 12-inch circumference to match the circumference around the ball, we want it vertically the same. We're going to want 36 rows. I'm going to stop at 18 and knit the second 18 in blue. You can use any combination you want. The ball doesn't have to have stripes, but it can. It could be 50 colors or it could be one. Here I'm hooking the end of the yellow yarn over a few needles so as to get it automatically woven in. It will show slightly on the outside, but it'll be very secure, even more so because I'm knotting it. And I'm doing that because it's a toy and will get hard use. And now just take the final color, whatever it is, leave a good long yarn tail, thread it into a yarn needle, and lift off the stitches in order, one at a time, onto the tail, so that we can gather the end. Here come the last few off. Now we want to sew the two edges of the work that were up the sides as we were knitting together. My preference to do this is the mattress stitch. Really, any sturdy seam is totally acceptable. Um, there is, in fact, more than one way to mattress stitch. I like to work next to the edge column of stitches. Some people work into the edge column of stitches. Only half a stitch of difference of opinion. I just think this is the sturdier way, and for a toy, certainly sturdy is good. We'll slow down in a minute for new mattress stitchers to get a better look as soon as I change to the yellow. I do have whole movies on seaming, but basically down into one row, up into the next row, and back and forth from side to side both. So down, up, off to the right, down, up. Now there's also another way to do this. You can make the seam even sturdier by going down on the right into the stitch that you came up in on the previous pass and then up into a new stitch. It is much sturdier. It's also stiffer and thicker and I don't think it's really necessary for this project but you know how your ball is going to be used. Maybe it is. One other thing that will make the ball sturdier is when you're stuffing it to put the stuffing in a stocking 
and shove the stocking inside the ball. I don't think that this is going to be necessary in my experience. Kittens enjoy these for a while and then outgrow them. And so it doesn't have to last 10 years. But I can always make another one if need be. Now, every yarn tail that we don't need to do anything with, it can just be shoved inside the ball and along with a bunch of polyester fluff or polyester fluff inside a stocking. Here is where it would have been easier on me now had I left the clothespin rather than the knotted loop at the beginning of the work. You'll, you're see me, seeing me have to find the yarn tail and pull it out because it's knitted in. But there it comes. It'll still gather beautifully. It's no problem. So now we're going to gather the second end, secure it, just as carefully as we secured the first in. I really like these to be very, very sturdy. I've decided it needs a little more stuffing, and I'm going to put some bells in it as noisemakers. They won't make very much noise because they really need air around them to truly jingle, but it taps a little, and the kitty will be able to hear that. Be careful about bells for humans and big dog puppies. The reason is if the little creature or human could get the bell in its mouth, it's a choking hazard. And you can't watch every second and know that never in a million years will this ball come apart. They usually don't. We're being careful, but wouldn't you feel awful? So I'd skip the noisemaker or use a big squeaker that nobody could ever get in their mouth if for a human child or a big dog puppy. And then really secure the second opening. Now, I've got obvious gathers showing. In my experience, babies, puppies, and kittens do not care. If you wanted to get rid of them, ribbing at the bottom and ribbing at the top, which turns half of the stitches the opposite direction, would make an enormous difference to not seeing much in the way of gathers, if you care. Clearly, this one doesn't care. She's having a ball with it as it is.